This is Mike Norvell's third year at Florida State, and now the roster is finally becoming his, made up of players that he's got himself. Now, one thing that we've seen with both him and Alex Atkins in recruiting offensive linemen is an emphasis on speed. Here's some clips of some freshmen they picked up this offseason that really show the athleticism that they're looking for. And when I see this athleticism, it tells me that they want to do one thing with these kids. They want to pull them. And typically that means gap scheme. Gap schemes use favorable alignments to get leverage on the defenders, meanwhile asking other offensive linemen to pull across the line of scrimmage to block out. This opens up a specific gap. The gap scheme Mike Norvell used the most in the past years and will probably continue to use the most is this counter play. On counter, all the offensive linemen except for the ones that you want to pull are going to block down finding the first defender on their backside. In order to hollow out a gap on the front side, you need to pull a lineman or two. Here this guard is going to kick out this defensive end, and this sniffer slash H-back is going to wrap around and block the first person that shows. Okay, so the offense is getting down blocks across the line of scrimmage and getting two extra blockers on the front side. How does the defense handle this? Well, first of all, as soon as this defensive end sees this tackle go away from him, he should know that a puller is probably coming around to his side. That's when he knows to blow up that puller by hitting him on the inside arm. That puts him into the backfield and gives time for his linebackers and safeties to get over. This pulling H-back will pick up either the will or the free safety on the backside. That means the other one is responsible for making the tackle. Anytime that you can force the safety to have to make a tackle out in space, that's a big win for the offense. Here's counter from this past year's spring game. All the offensive linemen except for this backside guard are going to be blocking down with favorable angles. This backside guard is going to be pulling around and blocking this unblocked defensive end, meaning that this H-back is going to pull around and probably block this playside linebacker. That means that if anybody's going to make the tackle, it has to be this backside linebacker or this safety. As the play progresses, you see that the playside tackle gets blown up in the backfield a little bit, which kind of gunks up these pullers but there's still a hole. The running back gets about three or four yards downfield before he's even touched, and the safety has to be in on the tackle four yards downfield. While counter is a very versatile play, it isn't a perfect play in its own right. There's a tried and true blueprint for stopping it, but it does ask you to make some concessions to do it. You have to rotate these linebackers and this safety down pretty hard and pretty aggressively to stop this play consistently. So how does an offense take advantage of this? Well, the way Norvell was doing it in the spring game is he added a constraint play, or a play that takes advantage of what the defense has to do to stop your base play. You can kind of think of this as a counter for the play counter. So if you're going to rotate your linebackers and safeties hard down to try to stop counter, he's going to show counter action with his offensive line, showing pulling linemen and down blocks, but then he's going to pitch the ball to his running back, who starts on a counter track, but then runs quickly out to the sideline. This H-back leaves this defensive end unblocked and hopes that the running back can beat him in a foot race to the outside and he pins any sort of linebacker inside. The wide receivers then take their matchups one-on-one -on -one, and that leaves the running back one-on-one -on -one with a safety out in space, which is an advantage for the offense like we talked about earlier. So here's that counter pitch in action. It's the same formation with the H-back on the same side as the running back and a single receiver on the other side. Now here, immediately after the play starts, it looks exactly like counter. You have the running back looking to take a handoff from the quarterback, you have pulling linemen, and you have all the wide receivers going downfield to block. However, immediately after this, the running back takes off for the sideline and beats that defensive end who was unblocked in a foot race to the outside. That means if you have good blocks on the outside, this safety, who's not even in the picture yet, is required to come up and make the tackle. While these plays seem unremarkable on the surface, they only gain three or four yards apiece, what they do is they really challenge the secondary to have to come up and be part of the run fits. That means that they're going to be especially susceptible to play action. Here you can see them in a slightly different formation. However, you still see the counter action to start with, with the pulling guard and the pulling H back. This play action really seals the deal as you see these linebackers bite up hard, thinking that there's counter. Behind them, the wide receivers are releasing deep downfield, meaning they have one-on-ones with safeties. This leads to an open receiver and ultimately a pass interference penalty. 
These quicker offensive linemen allow Norvell to do something else that he hasn't really been able to do at Florida State since he's been here, and that's run outside zone. He loved outside zone in his time at Memphis, and really we haven't had the personnel to run it effectively. Outside zone has these offensive linemen race their defender to the front side to try to beat him in a foot race. This causes the defense to flow with the play side, and it potentially opens up gaps as defenders flow at different rates. Usually you'll see with outside zone, the running back will push the outside, but find cutback lanes and cut it upfield. That's exactly what happens on this play. It's the same formation that we were working with earlier, but now the running back's in a stacked position behind the quarterback. They can change this right before the snap, so it's really not that big of a tell. However, this outside zone, you see the running back push to the outside before seeing a cutback lane and pushing it upfield. Now, just like with counter, outside zone requires the defense to make concessions. The defenders have to flow with the play side, otherwise those cutback lanes are gonna be huge, or the running back gets the edge and goes upfield without anybody to really tackle. Once you get the defense to flow play side, it really opens you up to counters and constraint plays like I talked about earlier. The constraint play to that outside zone they were showing is actually counter. Here's this counter in action. So this is out of the exact same formation we just saw that stretch play out of. And even these first steps look pretty similar to stretch that we just saw. The offensive linemen are down blocking, which looks an awful lot like zone blocking to the linebackers. The running back is taking the handoff on that side of the quarterback, implying that he's going that direction. This causes the linebackers to step up and flow a little bit play side, which gives these pulling linemen enough time to come up and make clean blocks. The running back then goes backside and there's no one to really handle this. While this was just a spring game and a watered down form of football, I think it gives us a really good indication that this offensive line is ready to take some steps up and do some more things creatively to get the running game going. It seemed like they were able to get good leverage and get some success without using Jordan Travis and the running game exclusively. This should help keep him healthy and help the offense continue flowing with him as quarterback. And if they can pick up one or two difference makers along the offensive line, they can be one of the better rushing attacks in the country. Thanks for watching this. I had a lot of fun doing it. Let me know if there's any other spring game content you'd be interested in watching. Check out the film review that we did on the triple option. And thanks for joining me on X's and Nulls.